we have built a biplane with carbon fiber strips 50 cm long, 5 mm wide and 1 mm thick. We join two strips to form the full length of the wings. Rectangles are formed with the strips, which are linked at the corners with sewing thread and cyanoacrylate glue. The wings are lined with cling plastic wrap, which is attached to the strips with cyanoacrylate glue. The wingspan is 97 cm, and the wing cord is 25 cm. The struts of the wings are made with wooden sticks of 4 and 5 mm in diameter. The two wing structure has a total weight of 64 grams. Each wing has an area of 0.2425 square meters, so the total area is 0.485 square meters. The horizontal stabilizer is 50 centimeters long and 17 centimeters wide. The vertical stabilizer is 30 centimeters high and 16 centimeters long. The horizontal stabilizer has a little decalage, set by placing the front cross stick below the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. The tail and fuselage structure, without the rudders, has a weight of 24 grams. The tail and fuselage are joined with the wings, forming the structure of the plane. For the rudders, we have used 3 mm thick depron sheets, reinforced with 3 mm diameter wooden sticks. The joint for the two rudders is complicated, so we did not use carbon fiber strips. The width of the rudder is 9 cm. The width of the elevator is 10 cm. The weight of the structure with the rudders but without the electronics is 108 grams. The distance from the trailing edge of the main wing to the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer is 33 cm, the equivalent of 1.32 times the wing cord. The electronics consists of an 1806 brushless motor, with a speed constant of 2400. A 3 cell battery with 500 milliamps per hour. A 12 amp ESC and two 3.7 gram servos. The propeller is a 5 inch diameter, 5 inch pitch triblade. The weight of the plane with all the electronics included is 242 grams. The wing loading is 0.5 kilograms per square meter. The thrust to weight ratio is greater than 1. In the first tests, we noted that to achieve longitudinal stability, it is necessary to put a lot of weight on the nose to move the center of gravity forward. It was set at 7 centimeters from the leading edge of the wing, which corresponds to 28% of the wing cord. The tail buckles laterally and this makes the aircraft unmanageable. We believe that the spin of the aircraft is caused because the wings occasionally get negative dihedral angle due to their structural weakness. We have moved the entire fuselage forward to shorten the tail arm and lengthen the nose arm, where the motor and battery are placed. This let us to move the center of gravity forward without adding any weight. The distance from the trailing edge of the main wing to the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer is now 27.5 cm, the equivalent of 1.1 times the wing cord. We have bought fishing line 0.6 mm in diameter. Using this line and a thicker thread, we have tightened the wings to achieve a certain dihedral angle that provides lateral stability to the aircraft. This way, the wings will not get negative dihedral. We have also decreased the decalage of the horizontal stabilizer, since the too advanced position of the center of gravity in the previous version implied that the backwards moment of the tail was excessive. The weight has increased to 245 grams, and the wing loading is now 0.51 kilograms per square meter. This second version was able to fly, but the plane still shows some problems. As we have shortened the tail of the aircraft, the turning moment for the yaw is insufficient. Keep in mind that these aircraft are designed to fly at very low speeds, so the rudders must be oversized given the low air force on them. We have also noted that the plastic of the wings inflates and deflates at times, which causes the lift force to be highly variable. Despite having decreased the horizontal stabilizer decalage, the aircraft still shows a heavy tail behavior. The cause seems to be the motor, which has a slight upward tilt angle. This causes the plane to pitch up when we throttle up. For this reason, 
the position of center of gravity must be set to forward. In the latest version, transverse strips of scotch tape have been placed to fasten the cling film on the wings. We did not want to use duct tape strips, as they weigh too much. We have removed the angle of the motor, so it is now completely horizontal. The rudder area has been increased, so we have almost doubled the area for the rudder. The width is now 21.5 cm. The structure has been further stiffened, triangulating almost all of it using the fishing line. To solve the tail lateral buckling problem, we have placed two carbon fiber strips arranged horizontally, so that the greatest moment of inertia of the section coincides with the lateral buckling plane. This way, we form a kind of H-beam that has torsional stiffness and stiffness in two planes of flexion. The stabilizers have been linked by wooden sticks, so they move together. We have managed to move the center of gravity backwards so that it is placed 10 centimeters from the leading edge of the wing, which corresponds to 40% of the wing cord. This position is more suitable for a flat wing profile than the position of the previous versions. The dihedral angle has been increased, so that it has an average angle of 8 degrees. This improves the lateral stability of the aircraft, so that it will not spin easily. The weight has increased to 266 grams, and the wing loading is now 0.55 kilograms per square meter. Note that this plane cannot fly with any wind or breeze. It only have a lateral surface on the tail, which implies that when a small breeze push on the tail laterally, the turning moment it creates can cancel out the moment we expect to be created due to the incidence of longitudinal wind on the rudder. If a small breeze push the plane laterally, it will turn well in one direction, but it will not turn in the opposite direction. Therefore, it becomes unmanageable. Furthermore, the center of gravity has to be placed very precisely. The static margin is very small. It is also noted that large diameter propellers cannot be fitted to this aircraft, since the torque would spin the plane. Remember that torque is directly proportional to the propeller mass and angular velocity, but is proportional to the square of the propeller diameter. That is, if we increase the diameter twice, the torque will increase four times. In these light models, it is recommended to use small diameter propellers with three or four blades. We have also painted the struts in different colors, to figure out the orientation of the aircraft. The transparent wings make difficult to guess the plane's orientation when it is far away. You can see the images of the plane in flight. And this is all, thanks. <laughs>